Yo, what is good, my fellow Magic Knights? It is your boy, Deadman Vince, back with yet another Black Clover Mobile video. Hope you guys have been enjoying the content lately. Hope the guides have been useful for you. I've been looking through the comments for the guides, and honestly, that last one was pretty long, so I will not try to talk your head off this time. I will try to be more condensed with this one, um, just so we can kind of like get more information. I feel like the problem is that my grinding experience is very different from like somebody else's whereas i grind everything out to like the extreme and i do i grind on a sense uh for every single mage in the account at the same time so i, I farmed experience for everybody at the same time i farmed uh talents for not talents um yeah talents for everybody at the same time i farmed affinity for everybody like in one big sitting so sometimes my timetable is going to be a little stretched out but i also feel like that's just more so showing the depth of experience I have in farming these things because I have so much to say about them, but there are some things that can be cut out. So I will try to slim this video down a bit. Today we will be talking about talents. If you guys have been enjoying the content though, you can go down below and you can smack that like button. You can also hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get notified every single time I drop a video because I know if you guys are already tapping in for a 40 minute video, a 30 minute video, whatever, my usually long ramblings, then I know you guys can tap in and just take a 10 minute, you know, just like look at this video real quick. Um, not to say I, I don't know how long this video is gonna be. We just started here, but we'll try to keep it short and sweet to the point point um so what are we talking about today we are going to be talking about talents talents are kind of like your hidden potential system for your mage and they are going to give you uh the way i see it is there are things that give you very big boost in um combat class right so your experience your um your skill page gives you a pretty sizable jump your gear obviously gives you a very big jump then there are like a lot of little like kind of like auxiliary things that also do boost your combat class but the reason why they boost your combat class a little bit is because like their effects are definitely um very big very big um not to say that the effects of the prior things aren't big as well but just you know the extra little percentages here and there definitely do make a lot um, a lot of difference but we're going to go ahead and just jump over to my characters we're going to take a look at the talents and we're going to kind of like talk about how i farm talents and um the best stages for you to get it from and you know which characters you should be prioritizing first but yeah without further ado let's get into it guys so guys currently right now i am kind of making these videos in order of uh what what i see as priority um and you know i started with the experience potions first because i feel like you want to get your character to level 100 first that's free stats um, plus getting your character to LR allows you to awaken their paths if you're on the Japanese version if you're on the global version It doesn't really matter that much. You can still go and get the stars open anyway um, But then also we talked about bond because bond is equally just as important because that's going to be extra duplicates for your character in the J Japanese sense and if you're on the global side Then that's just going to be like you unlocking LR You know what I'm saying unlocking the promotion levels But um, now we are over to talents and I say talents because talents is just another one of those things that are guaranteed to drop when you farm it um, because gear gear is like like you have to get to the higher levels first off to get lr gear in the first place and then once you get to those higher levels you're not guaranteed to get that lr gear more so you can get a bunch of ssr and a bunch of ur pieces which can be very useful for you still in the long run but i'll touch more on that in the gear video which is which should be coming up next I, I mean i have a road to wizard king video but that's that's nothing too crazy um but yeah let's go ahead and take a look at black Oss's talents for example so i'm gonna kind of first just read through each one of these talents and kind of let you know what each one of these talents are and um, if you look at it right here just some few things we can tell from initial like glance at this you can only have two like talents um active at a time on each mage right but i currently am at a point where i have every single talent unlocked in all my characters in the game i have all the characters in the game all 72 of them in the japanese version currently all their talents are unlocked that is from the rares to the ssrs it does not matter all unlocked um but let's get some translations up while i break this kind of like system down right here so this first one right here, it's like a picture of the sword with a little um, kind of like a hitting a sword hitting something, right? This one right here is going to be 7% increase to your attack power. So this is a 7% increase to like your physical attack, not your magical attack. There's a separate one for magical attack. That's the one up here with the wand. Um, this one's also 7%, but boost to your magical attack versus this one, which is your boost to your physical attack. Um, and then there's another one right here, actually, that is increase all damage by 5%. So like that increases all damage types like crit damage um penetration magic physical like all the forms of damage that you can do to somebody besides like dot effects those damages are going to be increased by five percent um a few more of these this one right here is going to be at the beginning of a wave 
2.5% critical chance buff is applied and it stacks up to five times. And that is per wave. So after you get through that first wave, it's gonna disappear. You're gonna go to the next wave. You're gonna have to restack that again. But 2.5 times five is looking like 13.25, is that right? Yeah, uh-huh, cool, 12.5, I'm sorry. It's 12.5, so so that one can be useful for somebody who is a mage that will do a lot of like damage on crits, but maybe doesn't have the best crit rate, um, and you need to build them up a little bit more. Then we have the time ticking one right here. This one's gonna be 10%, or no, I'm sorry, yeah, 10% damage increase when attacking a boss type enemy. I don't really like the ones that are kind of like predicated to a specific type of en enemy. Like there are like some passives in the game that are like, oh, you do more, like for real, for example, Rail's pat one of Rail's passives is he does an extra 7% damage, I think, to defender type enemies, which is cool in PVP when most of the teams have like defenders on them. But then if you go into like a stage that's like a farming stage and it doesn't have any defenders, then like you're not really getting any use from that passive and that kind of like i kind of discount that from him because i'm just like i don't like parts of your kit being locked away um by the certain type of enemy you're fighting because that limits very much like what kind of content you want to break them into take them into because like yeah you can still take real into a bunch of different contents but you know he's going to be it's like it's like there's just a part of his kit that's going to be dead in the mission it's just like wouldn't you rather find somebody who's going to have like his entire kit like working in the mission um then this one right here is a 10% increase in critical damage, which honestly, now that I'm looking at Black Asta, part of me kind of wants to do this one, which is the 5% increase to all damage, and then this one right here, which is the 10% increase in critical damage, but the only reason why I don't do that is because that increase to all damage uh, is kind of like a false statement for Black Asta because he literally has no magic damage like stats. So like half of that's not even like working for him. And that, that's the other thing. You kind of want to make sure that your characters are being built in a way where every single part of their passive is working as frequently as possible. Um, so honestly, I kind of want to do this because this gives him physical attack. This gives him a higher crit rate. Um, every turn until you know he gets up to that fifth turn and then he can't stack it anymore but yeah let's just go back around the circle because i kind of jumped around on this one the rest of the circles i'm going to try to just go in order but basically this one right here seven percent physical attack damage this right here five percent boost to all damage this right here uh ten percent boost to crit damage this right here uh, when you're fighting a boss enemy, you do 10% damage when attacking them, 10% extra damage when attacking them. This right here is 7% more magical damage, and then this one right here is going to be, at the start of each wave, 2.5% more crit rate every turn that stacks up to five times, and it, this is the start of every wave, so not the entire like mission that just st stays stacked the entire time. You finish that first wave, you get into that second wave, then it's going to restart again. You have to stack it back up to the 12.5% extra crit rate that you would get. Then, not only with this do we have these little uh, nodes around the circle, you get to the center of the circle, which is usually locked in the first place, and then you have what I call just like a socket stone. You can put a socket stone here, and there are a large socket stones, but they're just a little harder to come by unless you're like spending money or like unless there's like an event going on that's giving one out. But right here, this one I have crit damage on him because Asta is a mage that is meant to uh, be a guardian. He's survival first, damage later, um, and I I want him to have high crit damage, high crit rate for the for the instances where he does actually have you know big damage because you meet the requirements that you need to meet for him. So crit rate, crit damage is kind of what I'm looking at towards him. <clears throat> And uh, that's just kind of what I'm trying to build around, at least for the DPS kind of like department. This is all going to be like offensive type of thing. So it's an easy way to kind of like remember is the red circle is going to be all offensive. The blue circle is going to be all defensive. And then the green circle is going to be like all utility. So let's go over to the blue next. Yeah, cool. Okay, I tapped the right one. Good stuff. Okay, so the blue one is going to be this one right here is... When HP is below 35%, apply a block debuff effect for one turn. So this one I think is pretty good for Asta because for Asta to do his big damage, you want him to get put into a 40% HP range. And if he gets to that 35% HP range, then at the very least, you can't get debuffed with something else that will make it easier for you to die when you're in that range, which gives him a little bit better of a chance of survivability. And then also right here, this one is going to be 20% boost to defense. This one I just chose because he is some character that gets 
his extra damage scaling off of his defense and also i just want him to survive as much as possible so you know and, and the hp one's not a bad option either for like defenders but since he specifically has things that work off of his defense in his kit i decided to just opt for the defense on this one this one with the sword and the shield right here is going to be at the beginning of a wave defense increase and 4% no, defense increase and 2% critical resistance buff effect are applied up to five times. So kind of like the attack one, but the inverse. That one giving you more damage over time. This one's giving you more defense over time until eventually it stacks out to a certain point and then you have to go into that next wave to get that defense to stack back up. Um, this right here is gonna be increase your HP by 5%. It's funny that the defense can be boosted by 20%, but the HP is only increased by 5% because HP is just such a monumental stat, such a big stat. And um, for characters like Charmy, this one's like really good because she heals based off of um, her HP so you know just things like that to keep in mind you always want to look at all the little ins and out of a mage's kit to figure out you know exactly how you should be building them I don't feel like every single mage can follow like a very like simple guideline type of deal I think all of them have their own kind of like set rules to them and they all have their own little niches that you want to follow uh, this one right here is going to be 10% increased uh, toughness or endurance I believe they also call it 10% toughness when attacked by a boss type enemy so if you get attacked by a boss you have 10% damage reduction basically again something linked to when you're fighting a boss now say that you have a boss that's really hard and you want to do those buffs that because the buffs on the when you're fighting a boss those buffs are actually a little bit higher than like the regular buffs it's just that since they're linked to fighting a boss they're allowed to be that little bit higher you know so maybe if you get a boss that and you have like the perfect team for him but you just you need that little edge just to like finish the boss off and you can't beat the boss yet maybe you can go into the offensive one and give yourself more damage against the boss enemy and then maybe you can also go to the defensive one and give yourself more defense against the boss enemy to really help you out um also i didn't go over all the different socket stone types you can get on the red ones but i'll go over that in a second so right here i have a defense socket piece and i'm looking for a purple one but that'll come eventually but you have uh, defense socket piece you have a endurance socket piece and then you have a damage resistance socket piece and as far as I know these are the three different socket piece like types that you have for this um, it seems like so far in each color there are only three sockets uh, socket type stones that you can get um, the red ones are crit rate or I'm sorry crit damage uh, just straight up like magical and physical attack and I'm pretty sure this one or not even pretty sure for certain this one actually increases physical and magical attack not even like one or the other like kind of like gear would this one increases both but the one I have on right now is for crit damage and then the last one is for accuracy um, I still kind of got to figure out how beneficial accuracy is how much do i really need to focus accuracy on like which characters but that is kind of like a journey for another I, I mean this is the road to wizard king really so it's just like that's something that i'll just figure out along my way then we come over to the green ones over here and these are going to be like i said the more like utility based ones so let's start with this one right here this one right here is at the start of the turn if there are two special points if there are less than two special points a special point plus one buff is applied so if you only have one special point then the next turn that comes around you'll get two special points that'll put you up to like three instead of like just getting one special point and being back up to two after you use your ultimate um this one right here which that that one's not bad especially if you have a character that you want to rush their ultimate non-stop i don't think i'm going to put that on asta just because he is somebody who can when he's an anti-magic he can use a skill one and then instantly refill his ultimate gauge anyway so it's just like he has extra incentives already to get his ultimate filled back up again um maybe you want to do this for like the witch queen or something like that because the witch queen and black asta work really well and like compare and honestly this whole video is not about black asta but i'm just kind of using him as an example because i like to use black asta i use him a lot um and maybe you want to use it on the witch queen because she can just keep spamming her ultimate keep putting asta into anti-magic and then giving that man the immortality as well and just let him do what he do pop off do crazy damage uh this one right here is going to be five percent increased uh received healing so literally you have a charmy or something like that on your team and then everybody on your team has this they're going to be getting even more hp than what charmy was already naturally giving them this one right here is going to be buff debuff effect for one turn if block if you block then i'm pretty sure you get like debuff uh immunity is that what that is buff debuff effect for one turn that seems like maybe immunity for getting a, a getting a blocked hit on one of the turns um this one right here is five percent increased accuracy and five percent increased penetration uh the accuracy 
I'm not, like I said, not 100% like certain yet. I, I feel like I haven't seen accuracy in enough situations where it's made or break a run. So it's just like, I haven't been chimed in on it, but I will start to chime in on that more, especially because I'm going to start doing gear and substats are going to be very important. So I'm going to see what each substat is really like doing and how it's really changing the characters. More so what I think is important right here is the 5% penetration. Penetration can be some extra like good damage for some mages. Um, like Jack characters work very well off of uh, penetration. So uh you want to be paying attention to that this hourglass right here is one that i really really like at the beginning of each turn there is a 20 percent chance to apply skill to cooldown reduced by one turn buff effect so say your skill two you just used it, it has a three turn cooldown when you get back around to your turn there is a one in five chance 20 percent that when you get back to your turn your skill cooldown is not going to be on two turns left it could be on one turn left and then the next turn up you get that skill back which is very useful for like healers buffers because buffers you want to be buffing as much as you possibly can debuffers honestly you want to debuff as much as you possibly. honestly it's good for everybody it's good for everybody debuffers you want to debuff as much as you can dps's you want to do as much damage as you can so having the move back faster always helps i typically always give the hourglass to mages um i haven't found a mage yet that i've seriously used that i didn't want the hourglass on just because i am trying to get their skills back as fast as possible and then lastly the sword is going to be 10 percent increased blocking um, that's like literally just like reduced damage that you're taking uh, the socket stones for the utility one which is funny because I feel like people would think that the uh, HP one would be with the blue since they have an HP wheel and a blue or HP node on the wheel and a blue node on the wheel um, but the socket stones for this one are gonna be endurance no that's crit resistance right there critical resistance um, HP and then the last one is speed actually so some debuffers and buffers you're probably gonna want to throw speed in here but like with DPS's and like healers you're gonna want to throw healing in here the socket stones that you use are 1 million percent dependent on who you are using in that situation but now that we've kind of broken down what each one of these do let's go ahead and go backtrack real quick and look at the materials that you need to farm to get to this point so guys these are like what the talent materials look like the little the little colored uh or the crystals that have like the colored spheres inside of them and i i just recently got all of my characters to max um talents so i am looking a little low but this one right here is going to be like the smallest talent material that you get all right and there's one for each color the green the blue the red and um let's honestly just go ahead and go over to gray's shop so we can kind of just look at all of them so you can see the bigger ones here i can't make any of them because i don't have enough of this one that's smaller than it um then you look at these right here these are going to be like the medium ones so i will let you know for each one of those little nodes that i read out to you um it takes 20 of these larger ones no it takes for each node that i just showed you it takes 10 of these larger ones and then it takes 20 of these smaller ones. So if you want to fully fill out the circle on a mage, it's going to take you 60 of the bigger ones and 120 of the smaller ones. So typically what I do is I just kind of farm up the 60 and 120 like all in one sitting. And I like to just go ahead and fill out the circle completely because I don't like to fill out some of the circle and then, you know, forget about the rest of it and just kind of like go disappear, come back and then just look at it later. Like, oh, I thought I had this filled out. But as free to play players, what I recommend you do is when you're looking at the character in their kit, you want to look at exactly what they're doing and look at exactly which two skills or which two talents would be the best for them. And you want to unlock those two talents first those two talents are going to give your character big big uh buffs if you say because like look at look at this like just think about the fact this doesn't show up on the um this doesn't show up in the on the actual like stats like when you're looking at him on the stat screen but like when you go into battle all these extra passive effects go off so it's just like think about the fact that this man Asta is getting the extra 20 percent defense think about the fact that like when he goes into 35 percent you know he is getting extra he has debuff immunity right you want to get the two that are going to be most important to your character and go ahead and get them set up and also guys you can't mix and match whichever one of these you want they have to be beside each other that is the only sucky part about talents maybe they evolve it in a way later where you can change it to be any of them but i doubt it i don't see that happening but yeah literally these all start off locked at first and when you unlock them you unlock the middle slot now if you wanted to unlock the middle slot straight up without without unlocking any of these other nodes around the slot what you would have to do is you have to pay 900 black crystals to just open up this slot instantly right here which is a lot free to play players shouldn't be doing that and honestly i feel like wells maybe do that and i would never do that but like because I, i've literally never done that i've never spent black crystals 
on trying to unlock these nodes right here even if you unlock a few of the nodes and then you try to use say you unlock like five of the nodes and there's one node left i'm pretty sure if you try to unlock the middle without that last one being unlocked it's still going to cost you like 900 black crystals so just farm your talents do your due diligence and make sure that you get these fully unlocked so you can unlock that middle slot and give them that socket stone so let's look at asta's um well, I can't really take off the socket stone unless I replace it with something else. But another thing about the socket stones is if I put on another socket stone, it'll cost me some yule to exchange it. But when I put on that socket stone, this socket stone comes back to me. And how much did that drop my combat power? That dropped it by like a few hundred. OK, because I was at like seven, four, two. Th so like it dropped it by like 400, 500 or something like that. So don't sleep on those socket stones. They definitely do give you a solid amount of uh, a solid amount of stats um, now. Let's talk about where to farm the talent materials. Guys, here we are back in the illustrious farming dungeon again. Uh, the talent material is actually gonna be this dungeon all the way down right here. And um, it just kind of depends on, you know, are you working on a DPS and getting their talents at the very moment? Okay, cool. Well, do red first because the most important stats for a DPS are going to be their like offensive stats. If you're going for a guardian, farm blue first. If you're going for a healer, I usually farm blue first. It could stand a reason to farm green first as well because you can give them extra HP and give them that ability to cool down their skill too a little bit faster um, by chance. Or if you're doing like a debuffer or a uh, support, I definitely recommend always going for the green first. But um, these stages right here, you'll see on stage 15, the possibility, you can get uh, the large stone, you can get the medium stone, you can get the small stone, and you can get each one of these stones um right here the socket stones but the only problem is that you get all the way up to level 15 and you can't even get an ssr socket stone which feels kind of like a scam um that's why you don't want to farm these stages on level 15 because you're just trying to do a harder mission for yourself anyway realistically and shout out to blade surfer for this because he he actually went and did all the studying and everything and figured out you know which stage is the best for you to farm and honestly just building off of what he's done, I would say stage six is absolutely the best stage to farm. That That is what he said through his research. But just me going through this and actually just doing it over and over again has kind of made me realize why he said stage six is the best stage. Stage six is going to be the best stage because these socket stones right here are ass. You can put them on your characters for the time being just to get some extra stats out, but like, you know, depending on what event the game is having at the moment, you can just use an SSR one to replace that one instead. And plus, you probably aren't even at a point where you're farming out like full talent wheels just yet, unless you're just like absolutely stacked and you're chilling, right? You're probably not at a point where you're farming out the entire like talent wheel and putting in a socket stone anyway. A lot of my characters still don't have socket stones. That's because I don't use that. I don't use a lot of them. I'm, I'm still in grind mode. I'm still working on a lot of them. But um, basically, you don't want to waste your time farming these higher level stages just because when you go up to level seven right here, these automatically get added into the mix. And it's only that one, but that is one extra thing that it could drop instead of you getting these to drop right here. And these are gonna be the most important thing that you want. And when you farm stage six, typically what's gonna happen is you may get a few of these. You can see I have 239 of these, but that's because I've, I've farmed multiple different like level stages because I, it required, I require different materials of different levels at different times. But you'll get a few of the legendary ones you'll get a few of these ones, the medium ones that you do need, but you'll get a lot of these like smaller base level ones. And literally you can just go up, to, you can go to gray like I did earlier. You can literally just convert these up into the medium level ones. Now these, you have to convert three of these into like one of the bigger level one, but even still, you get so many of these, you don't even like notice really, it's perfectly fine. So you want to farm stage six because this gives you a chance to get all three levels of the material, but more than likely you're just gonna be getting the small ones, you're just gonna be converting them up which on which isn't that bad it doesn't it's not as tedious as you would think um talk, you're talking to somebody who literally did it for every single character in the game and just finished like two days ago so gg to me but yeah farm stage six now sometimes when i need to also also this um this stage only costs 11 stamina whereas the higher level stage costs 14 stamina and yes that's just a three stamina difference but when you're farming this stage like every day like wide scale like trying to get all those materials it's going to be a very noticeable difference between the stamina that you're using because I believe all the way at the final stage, it requires like, is it 1650? Let me, I honestly, I can just do the math for this real quick. 50 times 14 is 700 
and I'm thinking of if I do it like times three. So let me see times three. So if you wanted to do this stage and just like auto battle it, because dispatch is good, but dispatch, you can't times three things. So that's why I still like to do the actual auto battle myself sometimes, especially because sometimes I'm doing stuff that requires me to be away from my iPad anyway. But if you wanted to do 151, so the 50 times three runs, um, that will require 2100 stamina if you're doing it on the highest level. And while you're doing it on the highest level, you're gonna get a lot more of these bigger ones, you're gonna get a lot more of these medium ones, and you're gonna get a, a smaller amount of these small ones, and let me tell you, it does not feel good to convert the these ones right here down into smaller ones, or these ones down into smaller ones. You can do it, but it just doesn't feel good to do that. Rather, you wanna farm the smaller ones to make sure you have an overabundance of those, and then just kinda of like morph them up into the other one, so it doesn't feel like you're wasting any material that's like really good for something that's like decent, right? And plus, when you go all the way up to level 15, there's three of these that you have to like that you have a chance of getting now and those are honestly like whatever so you want to stick to stage six because one is going to save you some stamina two you're not going to get those extra socket stones that are kind of mid three you're going to get a lot of the smaller material you're going to be able to just fuse it up into the higher level material anyway and get the characters talents boosted up to wherever you need to because i look at it in a sense of oh i need 60 of these right here and i need 120 of these per character but like i said for a free to play it's not going to be exactly the same you're probably looking at this more so like okay i just need 20 of these I need like 40 of these that's easy boom i can do that but if you farm stage six and you just do your 50 runs like every day just do like a nice little 50 run chunk on this mission and you'll be chilling on talents um stage six 50 times is 550 stamina i'm pretty sure yeah it's 550 stamina and um if you do that times three with the times three like feature it'll be like 1650 stamina 1650 stamina is a lot better to spend than 2100 stamina that still gives you extra stamina to do whatever you need to do within the day whatever you didn't finish grinding or anything of that nature also the last thing that i want to talk about is the fact that these right here are not actually um in they're not they don't have any use in the game just yet there's nothing that you can use these on to upgrade it um more so they're just kind of sitting there right now and i've been using them to like convert down into the medium ones but that's just different that's just me i'm a perfectionist and i'm looking to maximize my account you guys definitely should not be converting these down into smaller ones um you should just farm more at that point if you need more um even if it's like a oh i could have this character like with two talents today i feel like you still should just wait for your stamina and just build it back up and just farm some more of those potions because you do not want to waste these big ones right here these big ones right here they are not in the game or they're not they don't have a use in the game yet but i feel like since they don't have a use in the game but they allow you to farm them so much that when they do have a use in the game the use is going to be very expensive and i feel like they can justify it being very expensive not money wise not real life money wise but more so just like in the game like you're going to require a lot of these i feel like it's going to be expensive just because they've given you so much ample time to farm this up and like you have to farm talents anyway so they know they know that you're getting these materials right here so just be on the lookout for what this could be um what could happen with these i'm not sure what i'm thinking since it's already talents i'm thinking maybe you could use the big ones to like boost the effects of your socket stone but that's just my guess i'm just trying to keep things as uniform as possible and i don't see them i don't see them making these something that you use to like boost like a character's like skill or something like that like no i don't think they're gonna like cross like pollinate whatever they're doing with each material there is a material for each specific aspect of growth for a mage and i think these will stick to the like talents and i feel like probably this will be something that you can use to boost your socket stones or something like that but other than that yeah i don't know i don't know what these could be used for so just stockpile these be smart with these don't use them up just sit on them just wait on them just chill um but that's it for my like talent video and i'm sorry guys i literally was trying to make this video not as long as like the last video which is not as long but i, I try to make these videos shorter but it's just like every single time i show you guys something i have to give you like all of my reasoning behind it so that i don't just seem like somebody who's just saying do this because i'm a content creator that's not the kind of person i am i want it to be like a 
do this because I did this and these are the results that I got from my training. This is what I like looked at. This is what I perceived from that. But if you guys are enjoying these videos and you do find them helpful, leave a like down below and definitely hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you get notified every single time I drop a video. And I really do hope that these guys are helpful to you guys and I will continue to work on trying to trim down the videos and try to be more concise about it. But guys, that's gonna be it for your boy, Dead Man Vince. I am signing out.